All right, guys, I got a couple of watches here that my buddy Michael sent in. He's known for having either limited edition Seiko or G-Shock or special configurations. For example, this guy here started out as a base Seiko SRP 231 case and, uh, you know, the black shroud and everything. And then to take it up a notch, he wanted the red accents. So he sourced a SRP229 for the crown, you know, the red little stripe on the crown. And, of course, the whole guts, basically how I, you know, swapped the turtle guts over to the SKX. He basically did the same thing here. And then a nice IP-coated shroud here. So um, it gives him the configuration that he wanted. And it's, it's very similar to, um, if I remember correctly, the SRP233 basically had this kind of configuration with the all black with the red bits but it had a red polymer shroud so it'd be kind of like a take on that so I'm not really sure you know how he sourced the parts or what he did exactly plus this one also has a uh, anti-reflective coated sapphire crystal and both these guys uh, have the 4R36 so it has the hack and the hand wind and all that good stuff um, and the really interesting handset here you can see is the uh, the hands have like the line going down the center. So it helps it pinpoint to what it's pointing to. And then it has kind of that sumo style shielded seconds hand there. So really nice um, handset I think on these. And a lot of modders will use these. I've seen them on um, other watches for sure. So size wise both these guys if you're if you're unfamiliar with these. Uh, baby tunas or whatever you want to call them is uh, 47 and a half millimeter including the absolute extreme of the shroud the lug to lug is about 51 and a half nice turned down drilled lugs and then the thickness is about 13.2 so really close to like most divers lug width of 22 and you could get them on bracelet like this guy too which is basically the same as the Seiko monster bracelet and uh, tapers down of course so and I know when these first came out, I think a lot of people were calling them um, like a new monster or something like that. I, I really don't think, you know, they're definitely more of a tuna because they have the shroud. Um, and yeah, the monster has like a mini shroud, but it's not shrouded like these guys are. This is definitely a tuna in my book. So yeah, next to the monster you can see there. So this one's really cool too. The limited edition, but not numbered. This is the SRP 453. And then, of course, they did a monster. Seiko did a monster, the 455. Very sil similar color combination, almost identical, but in a monster form, which is a really popular one. Um, of course, same size and everything like that. Now, this one comes on, traditionally comes on the blue polymer um, or rubber. You, you can see you can bend it here. It ain't going to break. It's basically rubber. Um, shroud and Michael swapped it out to this polished titanium shroud. So it gives it a really nice, rich, more um, expensive look, I think. So and then it has the gold tones and everything. This one's also fitted with a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the underside. So uh, let me give you a wrist shot of these guys. I've had a couple of these watches on the channel before. You can see on my seven and a quarter, they still wear great. Very much like a like a tuna or an oversized monster, like a little bit, you know, how that would basically wear, if that makes sense. Um, still has the Seiko Magic, super comfortable on wrist. Um, you know, this both these models, or this line, the Seiko Tuna line is super popular. If you go looking for these used, there's definitely a cult following on these. It's just maybe a little more hidden so much, uh, you know, versus like the monsters or the... Um, turtle guys and stuff like that uh, so there's definitely a, a huge following for this model of watch and rightfully so because it's basically an automatic affordable tuna so you know you're not going to pay that thousand dollars for the quartz tuna which is a great watch um, and you're definitely not going to jump up to like a spring tuna or something like that back in the day when you could get these on a regular basis they had some models around the two hundred dollar mark um, they're far from that now but uh, they're still really great watches, and just like all the other ones that once they disappear, you know, they start to pull a premium. 
Um, but if you really want to experience them and, and, and try them, then I still think it's worth it because there's some really interesting colorways or, um, you know, concoctions like, you know, this this black with the red trim or even that limited there where Michael just took it up a notch. So really great 120 click bezel action. Um, the nice shroud here actually does not, I mean, it can bite you if you try to, but it doesn't bite you like sometimes, you know, people complain on the Seiko Monster. So um, I will say it's, it's sharp here around the crown. Um, so you do have that, but in, if you get one with the, the rubber shroud, I mean, that's obviously not going to be sharp anywhere. That's going to be totally fine. So, um, let me give you a loom shot and I'm going to close this out. Big thanks to Michael for lending these in. Always nice to see some rare or discontinued Seikos. I know sometimes people don't like it when I, when I bring them up because I know they're more challenging to get, but that's all part of the hunt too. It's always nice to be reminded of maybe ones that you've had in the past and revisit that. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next vid.